Hi folks, Roland Martin here. Well, I'm at my favorite lake. Hey, today's destination is none other than, than Lake Okeechobee, Florida. I tell you, it's, it's where I've grown up. It's, I've spent 30 years of my fishing time. I've had my businesses here and I've, I've guided here for just forever. It's absolutely my favorite lake of all times. Nestled right here in, uh, in South Florida, it's the largest lake uh, in Florida, 750 square miles of water. Now, lately I haven't been fishing Okeechobee a whole lot for the simple reason that the water's been kind of low and the fishing's been kind of a little slow because a lot of the grass is gone. There have been some hurricane issues and some weed spray issues, so I've been going to headwaters a lot. But today, we're back on Lake Okeechobee because last week a really important thing happened. They had a great big Roland Martin Marina tournament. My son Scott had almost, and his, and his daughter Hillary, had like 30 pounds of bass and still didn't even make the money. There were a whole bunch of bags, over 20, over 20 bags, over 30 pounds, or 36 pounds it took to win. And one of the places that they fished, in fact, I said, saw Hillary yesterday. I was out on the water yesterday kind of checking it out. And right here is where a lot of the big fish were caught. And okay, now what's, what's happening and why, and why, why they're here is ba basically it's a, it's a pre-spawn, no, it's a post-spawn deal, it's a post-spawn. They've already spawned. This is May, this is May. But what happens is the bluegills come in. And the bluegills are coming in to spawn and there's bluegills all in this shallow flat. Now it's shallow here. I'll just show you how deep it is. It's not deep at all. It's only, it's only this deep. I'm hitting the bottom wall right there. So it's, it's not deep, okay? And there's all, what it is, there's all this, this was all cattails. This is all heavy weeds and lily pads, say a year ago. But the water's gone up and down and it's died off. And so what there is, there's stubble, all this, all this uh, cattail stubble and lily pad roots are all sticking up. But there's bluegills here and also cichlids. Cichlid is a Mayan cichlid. It's a, it's a fish from uh, actually uh, South America. And this is in the lake too. Anyway, bass are in here feeding on that. So one of the things I'm gonna be doing is looking for any kind of activity of say bass eating a, eat, eating a bluegill. Okay, now what, what's my choices of fish? Okay, one of the things that you can't go wrong with is a chatterbait. Hey, I tell you, when, you don't, when you're looking for fish and wanna cover a lot of water, a chatterbait's the deal. Okay, that's one thing. The second thing, and probably my favorite deal, is, is a frog. Now, a spro frog. Now, I've done some trick to that, and I'm going to show you after a while what I've done to that frog. I've modified this frog, and I'll show you after a while what I've done. 50-pound braid, a big, big heavy-duty uh, flipping stick, a brand-new solace rod and reel, a big, a big UG button deal. It's called a, um, I, say, I guess it's called a, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, it, it's a... It's really a good good deal for putting in your side side now, and for a backup. If they miss the frog, here's the deal. How many times have you heard me say, have a Cinco or some kind of worm for a backup? And that's what we got here. A five inch Cinco, it's a dark color. I used to say 297 was the big color. That's the green pumpkin, but that happens to be a black and blue right there. And that works good. I got it on a, a 30 pound braid, a 30 pound braid as a backup. Okay, and the, the fourth rod I got is this rod right here. I think I'm gonna try, try swimming a worm as well. Now, here on Lake Okeechobee, you have these great big flats that are just acres and acres and acres, and you don't know exactly where the fish are. So you have to cover a lot of water. So one of the keys to all these lures is making a long cast. So I'm gonna take like this swimming worm, and I'm gonna throw it way out there. Look at that, 100 foot, boom. Hold the rod in kind of a high position, kind of reel it along. If I get a strike, then I, I react and drop the rod and let them take it. Okay, so that's one combination. But we're gonna catch them. I'm gonna try to start. There's one little one. Hey, but he sucked it down. That was kind of cool. It's just a couple pounds, but it, he barely hit it. He just sucked it down, and sometimes they'll do that. And anyway, you know, another thing that you have to notice when they hit this frog, almost always they get caught on the top of the mouth like that. If you notice that the way that's it's hooked. And the bigger fish get it inside their mouth. In other words, the frog will be down in their mouth, but on the roof of their mouth. 
okay? That's nah, just a little baby. Now, what happens with this frog when the thing comes out, you have to turn it all around like this and get it back in place. Then you gotta squeeze the water out, get the water out. Okay, check the line, it's 50 pound braid, but it's all good, it's all good line. And again, he just sucked it down. It, we didn't, he didn't hit hard, girls. Let me get out here. <sighs> well, it's a beautiful, beautiful scenario for a topwater bite. Oh, there's one. There's one. There's there's. That's what we're talking about. That's that's what we're talking about, son. That's the kind of fish we're talking about. That's the deal right there, son. That's the deal. That's the deal. Now we're talking. I knew we'd catch him. I knew we'd catch him. That's the deal right here. He's down in the, down in the grass. He's down in the grass. That's a big old bass. Look at that big old bass. Look at the big, big old giant bass. Big old giant one. Big old giant one. Big old giant one. Seven or eight pounds. Maybe, maybe nine pounds. He's big. He's big, son. He's as big as you get. That's a big one, son. That is a trophy bass. That is, that is what it's all about. That's why you come to Santee Cooper. That's why you come to Lake Okeechobee for 10 pound bass like that. I don't know if he's 10, but he's nine. He's way big. He's a way big one. I think we need to weigh him, huh? What do you think? Let's get the scale. Let's weigh him. Ah, what a giant, what a fish. Was that ever something? And you were on camera. Hey, I got, I got this guy, Tyler South. He's a good, good bass fisherman. He's my cameraman. And he's just, he's just, he just loves it when, when I catch monster bass like this. That's a great big eight or nine pound bass. Huge fish. That's what it's all about, son. Monster bass on top water. There's nothing better, There's nothing better. Folks, I can't get the scale to work. I tried it, it just, just won't work. There's no batteries or something in it. All I can say, length and the girth and everything else, that's at least a nine pound bass. That's a trophy bass, son. That's just as big as you could ever want. That's just a beautiful bass. Okay, so I'm gonna let him go. Just let him go right here in the water. Huh? There he goes. He's all right. He swam away. Hey, folks. Hey, I was here yesterday. I caught a couple more big bass, and I'll show you some of that footage as well. But what a spot. Can you imagine eight, nine pound bass and seven pound bass like we're catching in this film? Lake Okeechobee's alive and well. All it takes is, you know, it's all a renewable resource. You know, you get the water levels right, you get the grass right, hey, the fish will come back, and that's what's happening right now at Lake Okeechobee. Record catches. <clears throat> oh, son. Yeah, God, yeah. Oh, there was a swirl underneath mine, but I don't know if he's gonna take it. He swirl. Oh, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. He's, I saw the swirl, I saw the swirl, I saw the swirl, and he's not real big, he's, but, he's, but it's so cool. He's still four or five pounds, not bad. Not bad. He's big enough where you have to net him. When they're that size, you have to net him. Huh? That's a good fish. That's not as big as that nine spoiled. I catch a nine or ten pounder, and, I, and now these four and five pounders, <laughs> it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> four and five pounders, and don't, they don't even interest me anymore. I want a nine or ten pounder again. <sighs> That's a four pounder, okay. That's a nice one though. Hey, that's, but it was neat because what happened, hey, here's the deal. That fish, if I hadn't really watched what I was doing, I got these prescription polarized glasses by, by uh, <clears throat> blind fisherman, and I saw a little swirl behind it before he ever got it, way before he ever got it. And I really kind of finessed it and kind of wiggled it around and did just right. And here's another thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna retie my line. 
I've caught so many fish now. I've caught a whole limit of big giant bass. Well, not a whole limit, but I've caught quite a few. I've modified this Spro Frog. This is a Spro 60, Pro Popper 60. And it normally comes with three odd hooks. But now what I've done, I've taken the next size bigger frog, which is the Bronze Eye 65. It comes, the Bronze Eye 65 comes with a four odd hook. I've taken the hook out of the Bronze Eye Frog 65, and that's a four odd, and I've put it into this number 60 Spro Popper, which is normally a three odd. So it's a whole big one hook uh, size bigger. Now you notice the hooks are sticking up. See, they're not over, they're not touching, they're way bigger hooks. And you basically hook every single fish. I've coupled that up with a 50 pound line. Now, Gary Milicevic, he's one of the top guys on the lake. In fact, just the other day, he had 36 pounds with five fish and came in second place in the tournament just here last week. So that's how good he is with the frog. He's the best frog fisherman I've, I've ever fished with. And I've fished with Ish Monroe and I've fished with with uh, Dean Rojas, who, who, who invented this frog, and they're all equally as good too, but I'm telling you, uh, Melissa Vick is right up there at the top with, with them. And he does a lot of really interesting things, and that's all he throws, pretty much all he throws is that frog right there. And any color will work as long as it's black. Okay. Okay. I got one. I got one. Okay. Oh yeah, another good one. Another good one. Another good one, son. I slowed it down. Slowed it down. Slowed it down. <laughs> another big four or five pounder. Woo, son. That's the kind of fish, I'm telling you folks, this is heaven. This is, this is, I, I love frog fishing. And when you catch this, this size fish, and I know that's not quite five pounds, but, but it's a decent bass. It's still just a quality bass. You know, I guide all the time. Half the people I take fishing have never even caught bass that big. So anyway, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Now, that one hit kind of close to the boat, so maybe my theory of a long cast is out the window. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're just moving in. I don't know what they're doing. That was a big bass. Huh? That was five pounder. Huh? I guarantee you. Yeah, it was. It was a big one. That'll give us over 30 pounds. Oh, that's a big fish. That's a big one. That's a, that's a big one on chatterbait. Oh, son. Chatterbait time. Chatterbait time. Chatterbait time. Chatterbait time. That's what we're talking about, son. That's what we're talking about. Woo, son. I knew if, if you kept kept working at it, it's just like yesterday. There was some big fish to be caught yesterday, too, on this chatterbait. I'm going to have to get a net on him. He's really a good one. He's a good one. He's a good one, son. Look at this guy. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's the kind of fish you catch on chatterbait. Big six and seven, eight pound bass. Woo! So you know, yesterday we caught a couple big ones too. Had a had a five and a, 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 and a seven. Anyway, this is another big one. Look at that guy. Anyway, folks, chatterbait fishing is great. Have the right trailer. Have the right uh, uh, weight complement. You know, think about braid is a is a big factor, and uh, f f figure out the, the, the retrieve and the tackle. But anyway, hey, when you do, that's the result. Big giant fish like this.
God darn it. Oh, oh, shit. There's a big one. There's a big one. Big one, son. Big one. Big one. Big one. Yeah. Big one. Big one. Another big giant one. Another big giant one, son. Big giant one. Big giant one. Big giant one. Another big old eight, seven, eight, nine pounder. Woo! That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. What a day. Got a 30 pound day. Giant fish. Well, that's what we're talking about, son. Another trophy bass. Another trophy bass. Woo! That is what we're talking about. That is it right there, son. Another giant eight pound bass. Huge bass. Took it down deeper. Uh oh! Huge bass. Huge bass, folks. That's what we're talking about. I tell you, you can see that Lake Okeechobee is alive and well. There's some beautiful bass being caught right now. I wish we had more grass. I wish we had a bigger area to fish. As you see, there's a lot of boats behind us. There's not many areas in the lake that hug these big fish and everybody's kind of packing up and catching them. But nevertheless, there's some monster bass in here. So folks, if you want a trip of a lifetime, hey, get a hold of me. I'll take you fishing. I'll take you to Okeechobee. I'll take you to Headwaters. I'll take you. There's a million places I'll take you here in South Florida. But remember, summertime fishing is some of the best you'll have. I hope I've showed you a few things about how to catch them on a frog, how to get that visual action, and how to catch big trophy bass. We'll see you again soon.